So guys, I think I figured out the next dividend stock I'll be adding to my portfolio. It's actually between two of the different stocks on my watch list. There's three of them in total there right now. And I think one of these potential additions might surprise you guys. It's a company that I've had in the back of my mind for a while now. I've been pretty hot and cold with it. And right now I am very hot with it. But at any rate, guys, in this video, we're gonna go through each of these three watch list stocks. And I'll tell you out of the bunch, which one I'm most likely going to add to the portfolio. It's gonna be a fun video. Before we get to that though, I wanna hear from you you. What was the most recent stock you added to your portfolio? Let me know in the comments below. Now guys, my first watch list stock here is one you'll definitely have heard me talk about before if you've been around the channel for a while. This is Rollins, which is one of the world's largest pest control companies. And I've had my eye on Rollins for probably about a year and a half at this point. And while pest control is not by any means the sexiest type of business out there, it's very predictable and recession resistant. It's one of those things that will always be needed. And that's what I really like about this company. Pest control companies like Rollins tend to have steady demand regardless of what's going on in the economy. You know, if you have critters such as ants, spiders, termites, or things like that infesting your house or business, you likely won't delay remedying that. I see that as an expense people find worthwhile and will want to have taken care of as soon as possible. And because of the necessity and steady demand for this type of service, Rollins has managed to increase their sales even during difficult periods like the great financial crisis and when all of the COVID stuff was going on, which is a huge green flag for investors. And another one is the amount of recurring revenue this company generates. At this point in time, 80% of their pest control revenue is recurring, which certainly makes the performance of this company a bit more predictable. And as we can see here has resulted in some very steady growth metrics. Over the last 10 years, Rollins has grown their revenue by an average rate of almost 9%, with the bottom line growing even faster at almost 13.5%, which means that this company is becoming more profitable over time. And also the free cash flow is growing by an impressive rate as well at 12 and three quarters of a percent on average in this time period, which bodes well for the dividend. And on that note, taking a look at this company's dividend and stats, Rollins is gonna be your classic dividend growth stock. We've got that low starting yield of about 1.3%, so definitely on the lower end there, but that five-year growth rate more than makes up for it, in my opinion. This is coming in nice and high at just over 17%, but with that, I will say for a dividend growth stock, the payout ratio is also a little bit on the higher end, coming in close to 61%, and this company's been growing this dividend for the last three years. And with that, even though their dividend growth history is not the longest by any means, they have been making consistent and dividend payments for a much longer period of time. The consistency is really looking good. They've been paying this thing for almost three and a half decades. And then last but not least, before we move on to the next stock here, taking a look at Rollins share price performance, it's looking pretty good all across the board. In the last month, they're up three and a quarter percent. Year to date, they're up just over 7%. In the last year, they're up 13.1%. So they've done really well there. And if we zoom out once more over the last five years, they're up 93 and a half percent. And with all of these share price gains, I do think Rollins is a bit richly valued. I don't think right now is a great time to initiate a position. So that's kind of what I'm holding off for. But looking at the share price chart and seeing how this moves, we can see that Rollins does tend to yo-yo up and down quite a bit. So kind of what I'm looking for is another pullback in share price. Like if I can find Rollins somewhere sub $40 per share, that would really be interesting to me. And at that point, I would probably seriously consider initiating this position. But like I said, right now, it's just a little bit too expensive for my taste. But boy, do I think this is a great company. And I look forward to owning it someday. Now moving on to stock number two, Zoetis is one that I've been talking about a bit more recently. It's a newer addition to my watch list and I started getting really interested in it just about a couple of months ago. And in case you're not familiar with it, Zoetis is the world leader in animal health and they were actually established as a spinoff from Pfizer back in 2013. They make medications, vaccines, and other animal health related products with a heavy emphasis on cattle and livestock, as well as companion pets like cats and dogs, which is currently seeing growing demand driven by what Zoetis refers to as the human animal bond. And explaining this a bit more, pet owners, particularly Gen Z and millennials, prioritize the health and wellness of their pets. Many consider them part of the family, which is something I could personally attest to with my cat Peanut here. And the point is that even during economic downturns, pet owners should still be willing to spend money to take care of their pets in case something goes wrong, which adds some resilience to Zoetis. And like we saw with Rollins in Zoetis, we're seeing some really strong growth over the last decade with an average revenue 
growth rate of 6.7%, an earnings per share growth rate that's over twice as high at almost 17.5%, and a free cash flow growth rate that's even higher, coming in hot at nearly 21% over the last 10 years. And with numbers like this, as I'm sure you can imagine, the profitability of this company is expanding at a rate that's like almost too good to ignore. And just to give you an idea of what that's looked like 10 years ago in 2014, this company's gross profit margin was nearly 65%, which in its own right is really solid. But now the gross profit margin is pushing 70%, so it's climbing even higher. And then moving on in the same time period, their operating margin has grown from 23.6% to now just about 36%, which is a really nice boost. And also the net income margin has more than doubled as well, going from 12.2% to 27.4%. So a big jump there. And all across the board, this is exactly what you want to see. But anyway, switching gears and taking a look at Zoetis' dividend stats. Overall, I think these look better than what we saw a moment ago with Rollins, even though there is a lot of similarities between the two. I mean, in both cases, we're getting that low starting yield in the 1% range, with Zoetis is coming in just a little bit lower. Their starting dividend yield is just a hair above 1%, so really nothing to write home about there. But that five-year growth rate, guys, is even higher, considerably higher than what we saw with Rollins. And Rollins had a really nice dividend growth rate. But with Zoetis, we're looking at 22.7%, and with that, we're getting a very low payout ratio, sub 30%. When you see a dividend growth rate that high, you want to see the payout ratio on the lower end like what we're seeing here with Zoetis. But anyway, along with all of this, guys, Zoetis also has a five-year dividend growth streak. So just a couple more years, more than what we saw with Rollins. And then the last thing here is the share price performance in the last month. Zoetis has seen a nice little gain. They're up almost 4% just in the last 30 days, but still year to date, they're seeing quite a big drop. So what is it down about 14.3%? You can see they've been on a steady downward trend pretty much since March. They're starting to recover now, so we'll see where it goes from here. But otherwise, I do like to see that year to date drop. This pullback may present a good opportunity to pick up some shares at a lower price. And we dividend investors, that's our favorite thing to see right there. So this is the one that I thought would surprise you guys. If you've been watching the channel for a while now, then you'll know I've been hot and cold and on and off with Vici Properties for quite some time now. And truth be told, the reason that I get cold with this company at all actually has nothing to do with the company itself, which I know sounds weird. It's just that Vici Properties is a real estate investment trust, and I already have three other REITs in my portfolio right now, so I've always been hesitant to add any more for that reason. But at the end of the day, I do really, really like this company, and I think it'd be a really fitting addition to my portfolio, seeing as I do live here in Las Vegas, and this company owns a lot of the major properties here on the Strip, ones that I go to all the time, and they have first dibs on the rights to buy even more of them if the opportunity arises. And so overall, Vici Properties would be smack dab in the middle of my circle of competence. I have nothing but faith that this city will continue to grow, and I have nothing but faith that it will continue to get better and better over time. And because of all that, I think Vici would just be a great stock for me to own. And if we look at the share price performance, now wouldn't be a bad time at all to start a position. I mean, Vici's up a little bit in the last month. They're up 2.3%, but year to date, they are still down almost 7.4%. And over the last year, they're down double digits. They're down 11% here. So maybe a good opportunity to buy some on this poll back and start a position here. And with that, because of the share price drop, the forward yield of 5.7%, which is really nice, is also considerably above the company's four-year average yield there of 4.9%. So right now you're able to get an above average cash flow return on Vici properties by buying at current prices. And the rest of the dividend stats are also looking really good. Not only are you able to get that above average dividend yield, but you're also getting a really nice five-year growth rate with that as well, almost 8%. So when you combine that already high yield with that pretty sweet dividend growth rate. This is like double trouble in the dividend department. And the payout ratio is okay for a real estate investment trust as well, about 66%. And they've been growing this thing for the last five years. So those are the three stocks currently sitting on my watch list. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm only seriously considering two out of the three stocks at this time, Zoetis and Vici Properties. With Vici, like I said earlier, I am a bit hesitant to add more REITs, but then again, I keep coming back to this company over and over again. I just can't shake the want to own this company. Company, and I think there's a good reason for that. And I do plan on doing some more consolidating in my portfolio over time. I'm not in that big of a rush to do so, but I do see a reality where I dwindle down some of my real estate investment trust positions and only end up owning like 
two of them, which I think is a comfortable amount. But anyway, now with Zoetis, I think the valuation is fine. I like to see it coming down in share price, but I still feel like I need to spend some more time familiarizing myself with the company a bit more before I jump into it. I just gotta chew on it a little bit longer to see if it's really gonna be a good fit in my portfolio. So we'll see what happens. Out of those, I'm more so leaning towards Vici properties, but here's the problem. Right now, I'm really focused on building out my Starbucks position since it's dropped so much. I love having the opportunity to average down at current prices, and I'm also not done building out my Visa position. At some point, I know I've said this before, but at some point, I want this to be my largest individual holding, and I still have a ways to go before it gets there. In a sense, I feel like there's almost too many good buying opportunities out there right now, and it doesn't stop just with these stocks here. Check out this next video right over here where I'm telling you about three more deeply discounted dividend stocks that all look like great pickups right now in the month of May. Click right over here to check them out, and I'll see you in the next one.